So, the keen-eyed among you have noticed that the last few videos on my channel have been filmed in a brand new space. And that is because, in the last couple of months, I've been building a brand new workspace and studio. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of that workspace. Let's get started. Okay, so, the biggest change about the space is actually the size of it. I am finally out of my bedroom and I've got a proper, I think it's 400 square foot space to work with now, which is so much better for the versatility. And we've got kind of four areas I'm gonna show you here. We have the desk area, there's a podcasting slash film set area that's really versatile and can actually have multiple different backgrounds. We have a music area, because I've been doing a lot more music lately. And then finally we have our storage area where we keep lots of C stands and lights and lenses and all kinds of stuff like that. But let's get started with the desk, since that's probably the thing most of you are interested in. So the desk itself is a Jarvis bamboo standing desk, which means it has this little controller over here, which lets me raise the desk or lower the desk, uh, or I can actually program in different presets so I could do a standing preset or a sitting preset. So we did a dual monitor video a little while ago and these dual 4K monitors were featured in that video. I won't talk too much about them. The other kind of big thing on this desk are these monitors. These are Yamaha HS7s, I believe, and I now have them on these speaker stands, which put the tweeters at roughly ear height. So even though this space isn't perfectly treated for audio production, the monitors are at least at the correct height for me to mix music, which I've been trying to learn how to do recently. Also on the desk, we have a couple of music production things. There is a Native Instruments machine, which I use as a drum pad and a S61 uh, MIDI controller, which works really well for kind of composing songs. And then we have a Corsair K95 gaming keyboard, a Logitech G507 wireless, which I have been wanting them to make for years. They finally answered my prayers. And a few other knickknacks. We've got a wireless phone charger, which my editor Tony gave to me. Um, a few of these, these are SanDisk, I think they're SSDs, but in external enclosure form. So these are actually incredibly fast and I can edit off of these just as fast as I would off of an internal drive, which means if I have to travel, then I can just take one of these with me. And even if I don't have enough space on my laptop, I can just put files on this and edit like normal, which is pretty awesome. So we also have, oh, we have a stream deck here. So this is the Elgato stream deck. Now a lot of Twitch streamers and people who do game streaming, they use this for like tweeting while they're in the game so they don't have to alt tab out of it. I do something different. I actually use auto hotkey to bind each of these buttons to a different folder that I have to open really often on my computer. So this button is for the current video's main footage folder. This one down here is for my screenshots folder. And when I hit it, I can automatically bring up a window on my screen. So with all that said, let's talk about why the desk is so messy, because it's definitely not like a minimalist desk. And part of the reason for that is I've been working on a project recently where I had to use Logic Pro to mix some audio, but I wanted to use all this hardware. So I've got a dock over here, which charges my MacBook and allows me to plug in all kinds of stuff into it. And then right here is what's called a KVM switch. This, if I hit this button, will allow me to switch the keyboard, the mouse, and the speakers, the audio interface, and the monitors over to my MacBook, which I just set in this dock here and plug in, and I'm good to go. I can use my MacBook just like a desktop. All right, so underneath the KVM, we have the audio interface. This is a Scarlett 18i8 from Focusrite, and it's got, I think, like 18 different inputs, but I use the main four on the front. So a couple of these are the podcast mics, which I'll show you a little bit later, and the other two are, well, number one, I have my SM7B mic right here, which I'll use for voiceovers or for vocal practice sometimes, since I started singing lessons about a year ago. And then there's another mic over there, which is for the same purpose, but as a condenser mic. Also going into the interface are, of course, the HS7s, and then these Sennheiser HD 600s, which are my absolute favorite headphones, and I do most of the mixing for the audio and my videos on these headphones. Last but not least, we have the computer on the floor. Um, you know, it's a good editing computer. It's got a Core i7 in there, a GTX 1080, and it lets me get most of my editing done. And then the chair is an Office Master OM5, which I actually learned about from a Linus Tech Tips video. I like this chair, but I think if I were to go back in time, I wouldn't buy it because at least in my opinion, I think fancy office chairs are a little bit overrated. And I think it's more important to just get up, take breaks, make sure you're exercising, make sure you're staying flexible. And honestly, I've worked in like wooden kitchen chairs, coffee shop chairs 
They're all kind of the same. So I don't know, some people are probably gonna hate me for that opinion, but I don't think fancy office chairs are all that necessary. Anyway, let's move over to the video set area, which is also used for our podcast. So we have this table here, which is just from Ikea. There are a couple of uh, Audio-Technica ATR 2035 condenser microphones attached to it. These are what we use for the College Info Geek podcast. But this table actually pulls triple duty. We use it for the podcast, we use it for videos on my channel. You've probably seen the digital file organization video or maybe the recent one that Tony and I did on the iPad and its note-taking abilities. And then we also use this as kind of a main B-roll set. We'll sometimes set up uh, C-stands with cameras going overhead so we can film stuff top down or we'll use it for glam footage. And we also have these shelves from Ikea with plenty of fun little props and of course the obligatory llama on it as well. And then on this side of the space is all the music stuff. I've been into music for many, many years, but in 2019, my head writer, Ransom, uh, he introduced me to an artist named Tosh Sultana. And if you haven't heard of them, you really need to go listen to them. But they do what's called live looping, where they use a looper pedal to create loops with multiple instruments. And that, I kind of went crazy when I learned about that. So I've got this looper pedal over here. It's a Boss RC300, which allows me to do multiple loops at the same time. There is a uh, Line 6 Helix for guitar tones and bass tones. We have a Korg Minilog XD synthesizer, which is polyphonic, so it can do chords, it can do arpeggiators, all kinds of fun stuff. A Roland SPD SX drum sampler, so I can do drums, a mixer for all of it, and then the guitars and the piano. This is a Kawaii, I think, CA78. It's a fantastic digital piano. So all this runs into the mixer, that runs into this interface, and I'm able to plug my laptop into this if I want to, so I can record, or I can plug into this PA over here if I wanna just output the sound and just kinda of jam out. So I've been doing that to create some compositions like the one that I just recently put up on Spotify called Icicle Swords, which sounds a bit like this. And of course, I will have that link to the description down below, but we are gonna move on to the storage area. So this is one of the reasons I'm really happy to be out of the bedroom. I have more storage for the gear that we need to make better quality videos. So we'll just kind of start back in the corner here. I've collected a lot of tripods over the years, but my absolute favorite one is this Sackler one. Um, MKBHD talked about this in his studio tour video. And this thing is amazing because you can just adjust the height of it with three little levers at the top. And that has enabled us to just take a lot more B-roll a lot quicker. And one of the biggest things that I tried to keep in mind when building this studio and whenever I buy a piece of gear is, is it going to reduce the amount of friction involved in creating something? If I can make that friction go away, if I can make the process faster, that means I can make better things. Uh, more quickly. One other thing that I do want to note about most of the tripods, not all of them because we do have a bigger camera we're working with now for some of the shots, but for the camera that Tony's holding on the gimbal right now, uh, we usually have these Gorillapod heads on, uh, we have, I guess we have the attachment on every camera we use. I actually have an old ADD right here. So there's the attachment right there. And then I try to keep a Gorillapod head on nearly every tripod or tripod attachment that we use. That way, instead of having to screw in to a tripod plate, which again, takes time, adds friction, we can just click it in instantly and we're good to go. So I have that on here. I have that on the overhead setup, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. I have one on the C stand here. And that just makes, um, creating things really quick. And I wanna give a shout out to Bob Claggett at I Like To Make Stuff for giving me that tip. And speaking of C stands, we do have, I think two C stands right now. These things have been a godsend. I used to use the cheap light stands off of Amazon and well, they work for cheap lights, but when we're suspending cameras over stuff, when we're uh, putting heavy lights on things, the all steel C stands really, really help. And um, for anybody who does their own video production, you're gonna want sandbags because if you throw a sandbag on a C stand, this thing is not gonna tip over even if you have a good amount of weight on the C stand. So anybody who works in film production will tell you these things are worth their weight in gold, even though they're just their weight in sand. Uh, speaking of lighting, I'm gonna come back to this, but I do want to quickly go over here and show you one other thing that's kind of above my desk. So one thing that I've tried to do with my video production is use better lighting techniques. 
And one of those techniques is to use what's called a hair light. So we have a light that's kind of above my desk. So whenever I'm sitting and doing a regular video, I kind of have some nice lighting on the back of me. But this thing is easily able to, and if you want to step back, you can show this, swing over. And now we can light B-roll that's going top down on the table really, really easily. So again, it's all about versatility. So now let's go over to the shelves here. These are theme of the video, Ikea shelves, <laughs> but they work really well. Um, and here we've just collected a lot of the film gear that we need quick access to. So all of our lenses, and we've collected quite a few lenses. Uh, we're now using a Canon C200 for most of the A-roll that we shoot, which is pretty great. The quality on it is amazing. Um, we have some audio gear up here. These are the camcorders that we actually used to use for the podcast, but now that we have the C200, which can film for more than 30 minutes, we don't really need these for much anymore. So maybe I should sell them. Uh, another thing, another one of these little Joby Gorilla Pods on a tripod attachment. So any tripod that doesn't have a Gorilla Pod head already on it, we can just throw this attachment on there and we're good to go. Same with our little slider. So if we want cool slider shots, I've got a Gorilla Pod attachment on there. We're good to go with that. And then over here, we have a pegboard, also from Ikea, though I do wanna give a shout out to Matt Diavella for giving me the idea for this guy. And this is where we keep uh, the gimbal usually, if we're not using it, which we are right now. Um, we keep switch pod, which my friends Pat and Caleb actually invented and I kickstarted. Actually love this thing. And I actually don't know how this little uka uka got here, but I think you did that, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> actually, I like it, it's dope. Um, and they have these, we have these little drawers too. So we've got some like little attachments, screws, bolts, stuff like that can go in here. And right beneath it, we have a drawer unit, which also doubles as the charging station. So for batteries, I wanna get a label maker so I can like have a dead and a live thing. But right now I've just been putting dead ones up here and fully charged ones down here. So I'll just throw them in there when I'm not using them, they'll charge up. And then this one is batteries for the C200. I've got a iOS cord for iPads and stuff like that. And then within these drawers, we have a kind of rough organizational method that makes sense to me. So like tools and stuff go in here. This drawer is gonna be for just random film things like filters. This is a random cord drawer. So HDMI cables, display port cables. And then this is the audio drawer, which is mainly just XLR cables for microphones. And this is the microphone that we actually shoot most of our videos on. Um, down here, we've got extra extension cords, extra plug strips, and Finally, just some random stuff that goes to the C200. I try to keep that grouped. And that brings us to the last part of the studio that I'm gonna show you, which is the overhead setup. So sometimes we will set up for overhead with a C-stand in the B-roll area, but this is just for quick and dirty overhead shots. I can go in here, instantly turn these lights on. And then if I have like a book that I'm gonna show off, I can slide the camera into here. Again, we have a Joby Gorilla Pod head on this arm, which I believe is from Manfrotto. And uh, we can just, do really, really quick overhead shots. And then I had this monitor laying around, so I thought, well, I can flip the screen out on the camera and see what I'm doing, but if I wanna have a better view of what I'm doing, I can actually plug this little HDMI, uh, mini HDMI cord into the camera and then see what I'm doing on the monitor. And the monitor's on an arm, so it can easily be adjusted for position. And if you can come in close here, the one thing I do wanna mention, uh, I have these little sticky cable holders. These are super cheap and I can you can get them at Home Depot actually. So if I don't want this cable just falling back here, I can just easily shove it in there when I'm not using it. And these actually work really well for phone chargers, any kind of cable that you want on your desk but that you want out of the way. It's a really nice little handy thing. So like I said earlier, one of the reasons that I set the studio up this way was to reduce the friction involved in creating things as much as possible. And when I'm actually sitting down at the computer, one of the other tools I use that really reduces the friction in my life is Dashlane. Dashlane is a tool that gives me a ton of shortcuts for what I need to do online. It automatically logs me into websites and even autofills long forms. And it works on every single platform that I use. It works on my PC, it works on my Mac, it works on every single one of my iOS devices when I'm on the go. And if I were an Android user, it would work there as well. Dashlane essentially gives me a convenient and secure place to store and access my passwords, my form data, and even payment information. So I don't have to go hunting for my credit card or build some sort of memory palace every time I wanna buy something. And that helps me spend more time doing the work that I want to do. 
do. So if you wanna give Dashlane a try for yourself, go over to dashlane.com slash college info geek and sign up to get a free 30 day trial of Dashlane Premium where you can try all the features out for yourself. And if you do like it, you can also use the code college info geek once you upgrade to a paid subscription to get 10% off and to support my channel. Big thanks as always to Dashlane for sponsoring this episode and thank you for watching as well. Hopefully you got something useful out of this episode and I will see you in the next video. You can get subscribed right there if you haven't done so already or click right over here, which is probably covering my face to get one more video on this channel.